In this video, I'll show you how to use Apple Intelligence on MacBook and iPad. Let's turn our attention to Apple Intelligence on iPad. This offers several customization options for Siri and AI-powered features. To access these settings, go to Settings Greater Than Apple Intelligence and Siri. Here, you can select your preferred language, which is usually set based on your region, but can be changed if needed. You can also enable Allow Siri When Locked to use Siri even when the display is off. Additionally, you can change Siri's voice under Siri Voice Settings. The Siri Response option lets you choose between automatic spoken responses or silent responses. Keeping it on automatic allows Siri to decide when to speak. Other options include Show Siri Captions, which displays Siri's responses on the screen, and Always Show Speech, which provides a text transcription of your commands. If you use FaceTime, you can enable Call Hang Up by saying, Hey Siri, hang up. Announce calls and announce notifications allow Siri to read out calls and notifications. By default, notifications are only announced when using headphones. You can also manage Siri and dictation history, which stores past interactions. For messaging, enabling send messages automatically lets Siri send texts without confirmation. You can specify that this feature should only work when connected to headphones and set your preferred messaging language. Lastly, under Siri App Access, you can see which apps Siri can interact with and customize permissions accordingly. These settings allow you to fine-tune Apple Intelligence for a more personalized experience on iPad. At the top, there's a Siri button that offers another way to access AI-powered writing features. When you tap on it, a writing tools menu appears, allowing you to proofread, rewrite, adjust tone, such as making text more professional, friendly, or concise, summarize key points, and even generate lists and tables from highlighted text. For instance, if you select a section of text and choose the proofreading option, the system will highlight any areas that need improvement. Once the proofreading process is complete, a summary of the changes or confirmation that no changes were needed will be displayed. Now, let's switch to the Mail app. If you're drafting a new email and want to refine its tone, you can tap the Apple Intelligence button to enhance professionalism or adjust the wording as needed before sending it. Additionally, a Summarize button at the top of the Mail app provides a condensed version of an email's content, making it easier to grasp key points at a glance. A new feature I really appreciate is the Reduce Interruptions Focus Mode, introduced in version 18.1. This feature allows Siri and Apple's intelligence to automatically filter out unnecessary notifications and interruptions, letting me focus better. Moving on to more Apple intelligence features, let's talk about the Photos app. One of the first things you'll notice is the new cleanup button on the left side when editing a photo, or in another location depending on how you're holding your iPad. This feature is similar to tools that competitors have offered for a while. It allows you to easily remove unwanted objects from an image. Simply draw a rough circle around the object, and it's automatically highlighted with a rainbow animation. Then, with a tap, the object is removed, leaving your photo clean and polished. For example, this feature worked flawlessly in the image I tested. Additionally, the Photos app allows you to create a personalized movie based on any prompt you provide. You can create a personalized movie based on prompts, like Coffee with Sarah. The app will automatically select matching images, create a video with background music, and allow you to save or share it. You can even customize and give feedback on the final result. To update your macOS to Sequoia 15.1, once you've installed the update, go to Settings, where you'll find a new section called Apple Intelligence and Siri. Here, there's a toggle to enable or disable it. You'll also notice a new Apple Intelligence icon in the status bar, replacing the old Siri icon. Clicking it reveals a redesigned interface with a Type to Siri option, featuring a glowing animation. However, instead of clicking the icon each time, you can set a keyboard shortcut. By default, some options are available, but you can also customize it, such as changing it to Command plus S. Pressing the shortcut brings up Siri, and pressing it again dismisses it. Additionally, you can enable voice activation for Siri if preferred, but the Type to Siri feature makes it more convenient. As you type, real-time suggestions appear below, updating dynamically with each letter. You can use the arrow keys to navigate and hit Return to select a command, like 
Tell me a story. Another handy feature is that you can drag the Siri window anywhere on your desktop. Once moved, an X appears, allowing you to close it easily. If I type, how do I connect a mouse? Apple Intelligence provides an answer instantly without redirecting me to the web. It even references the macOS user guide at the bottom. Another new feature in macOS Sequoia 15.1 is notification summaries. To customize this, go to Settings Greater Than Notifications, where you'll find the Summarize Previews section. Here, you can enable or disable summaries entirely or apply them to specific apps and websites like Apple Newsroom or Bring a Trailer. These notifications now appear as summaries in the Notification Center. Now, let's talk about Apple Intelligence and Mail. First, there's a Priority Inbox, which highlights unread messages deemed urgent or important. Once you read them, the section disappears. Additionally, when viewing an email, you'll see a Summarize button at the top, providing a quick summary of the message. Apple Intelligence introduces powerful writing tools in macOS, making it easier to refine and improve your text. When selecting text, you'll notice a Writing Tools icon in the toolbar in apps like Notes. However, these tools are accessible system-wide by right-clicking on selected text and choosing Writing Tools from the menu. From there, you can either open the Writing Tools panel or directly select a function. The Proofread tool automatically scans text for errors and corrects them. Changes are underlined in purple and pink, allowing you to see exactly what was modified. Clicking the arrow next to a change provides details on grammar, punctuation, or spelling corrections. If you prefer to keep the original text, you can undo changes individually or view a side-by-side -side comparison before finalizing edits. The rewrite function helps adjust text tone. If an email or message sounds too harsh, selecting Make Friendly softens it into a more polite version. Similarly, if you're writing a job inquiry and want it to sound more professional, selecting Make Professional will refine the text for a polished tone. The rewritten text won't automatically replace the original, but you'll have the option to copy or replace it. For those looking to simplify their writing, the concise tool shortens text while keeping key points intact. If you need a quick overview, the Summarize feature condenses the text into a brief paragraph. Additionally, selecting key points extracts the most important details into bullet points, while List View organizes them in either a bulleted or numbered format. The Table function detects numerical data in text and automatically arranges it into a structured table format. Beyond writing, Apple Intelligence enhances the Photos app with a new cleanup tool. To remove unwanted objects from an image, open a photo, go to Edit, and select Cleanup from the top toolbar. Simply highlight the object, and Apple Intelligence will erase it seamlessly. Another major improvement is natural language search in the Photos app. Instead of manually browsing, you can type a description like dog lying down, and macOS will find relevant images. The Memories section also includes a dedicated Apple Intelligence-generated album, curating meaningful moments automatically. What's more, iPhone mirroring in macOS Sequoia 15.1 now supports drag and drop for files. Instead of using AirDrop, you can simply drag a file from your Mac and drop it onto your iPhone's Photos app, instantly saving it, and vice versa. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more tips and tricks. There's another video in the channel on how to use Apple Intelligence on an iPhone. Go check that out if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.